Welcome to the Profitable Nomad Couple Podcast. We're a show about growing your online business and enjoying a location-independent lifestyle, all while strengthening your relationship with your partner. We are Austin and Monica, a husband and wife duo who run our business remotely so that we can travel the world in constant search for adventure, good food, and new friends. We are here to share practical tips and tricks to help and encourage you wherever you may be on your digital nomad journey. All right, let's dive in. All right, you guys, welcome back to another episode. I am super, super excited about this episode because we have a special announcement. In one month, Austin and I are launching a course to help you start your online business and start your digital nomad journey. And we are super excited to be sharing just a little tiny bit today of what we are going to be sharing way more in depth in the course. Even better news than this course coming out at all is the fact that when we launch this course initially, it will be a beta launch, which means you can get an incredible discount. So keep an eye out for that. We are going to link the wait list for this course in the description below. So check that out if you're interested to find out what the discount is going to be. It's about one month from the day that this podcast is live, which is December 7th. So if you're listening to this a little bit later, make sure you definitely jump on the wait list if you are listening to it before January. Okay, so what is the topic today? Today, we want to talk about some business basics. And we're talking about this because we have a whole module on this in our course. We do want to give a little disclaimer. There are entire college degrees and master's degrees around business. There is a ton, a ton to know about business. And by no stretch of the imagination are we going to cover everything you need to know in this short episode. But what we are going to do in this episode is we're going to give you some steps that will help you start your online business. And then you can take the tips and suggestions that we give you today and you can go research those a little bit deeper. You can definitely go look into our course because in our course, we are going to dive into each of these topics in more depth, but specifically for digital nomads and online businesses. So just use this as a springboard to start your business education. Yeah. So think of this as a general overview for starting and growing your online business. And there are seven steps that we've outlined for you today, starting with coming up with a good business idea. This is where it all starts because, I mean, you have to have an idea to build from. You need to start with some idea of what you want to build a business around. What are you going to be offering? Are you going to be selling products? Are you going to be offering a service? Are you going to be a web designer or a photographer? Or are you going to be making little trinkets that you sell? It all starts with the idea that you want. And this is one of the most exciting, fun parts because you just get to have fun. You get to throw out all these different ideas, be creative, explore your hobbies and interests and your skills, your past experience. If you are struggling with where to start, maybe you have too many ideas or maybe you don't have enough ideas. Monica and I have put together a list of 63 ideas specifically for online businesses that you can start. They all have very low capital, so you don't need a lot of money to get it off the ground. And we've segmented it into different categories. So maybe you're someone who's really good with numbers. Maybe you're someone who's more creative. Maybe you're really good with words and you like writing. We've got something for all of you. And these are all businesses you can start while traveling the world, which I believe if you're listening to this podcast is the ultimate goal, right? You'll be able to find that linked in the description below. All right, so that takes us to step number two, conduct your market research. And this cannot be emphasized enough. It is so important to know if what you are offering is something that people are actually willing to buy from you. So Austin, how do you conduct market research? Yes, you can conduct market research by, first of all, just talk to people, talk to friends and family, talk to people you know who you feel might be interested in this business idea you have and ask them, is this something you would pay for? Is this something you need? A lot of times you will find that the business idea that you have, maybe your friends and family aren't your target audience. And so luckily we live in a day and age where we have the internet. So you can go online to so many places. You can go to Facebook groups. You can go to different chat boards. You can go to Reddit is actually a really good place to find conversations happening around stuff like this. Just jump into conversations that are already happening and find out what people are talking about. For example, when Monica and I were putting together this course of how to work and travel while running a business as a couple, we were actually 
actually engaging in a lot of conversations in these places I just mentioned. We were talking to people and we were looking up questions that people had. And then as people were talking about and had questions, we would message them directly and say, hey, you know, I, I noticed you brought up this concern. Tell me a little bit more about that. So we've been able to build our course around things that we know people have an interest and a need for. So if you build your business this way and do this research before you get too far into this idea, you'll know that it's a good idea that you have that you can build the business around. Yeah, and it also helps you build an audience of people who do want your services, who are excited about your business and who can kind of rally behind you. You also want to take a look at any competition you might already have. So we live in a day and age where there are tons of people online, which is fantastic. And there will be more than likely there's going to be competition. So don't be scared. That's totally fine. There is plenty of clients and there's plenty of money to be made online. There's enough to go around. But you do want to look at your competition. You want to look at how much you want to look at what they are doing to be successful. You want to look at how much they're charging. You want to take in all of these factors so that you know going forward about how much you can charge. You want to know what your competition is like and what you need to do to stand out and be unique from them. Yep. I wanted to give another example of how powerful market research can be and why it's so important. This comes from our own experience when we were looking into different solutions as web designers of how to have different task management with our clients. We actually came across a couple guys who were building out a software to do just this. I got on a call with them and they were conducting market research with me. And so they asked me questions about things I did and did not like as a web designer in the softwares I was using. And then a couple months later, they came back and they've put together this software that is exactly what we've been looking for. So if you are the person doing the research, the benefit to this is now that you know exactly what your clients need and you can use that to build a service or to build the product based on what they want. Now you have people that you already know are going to be interested, just like Monica and I are already interested in the software because we've given input into what it should be. So now it's built around our needs. So we're much more likely to purchase and use the software. In the same way, you're going to have people who are already going to be interested and invested in what you're doing because they know it's going to be for them. Yeah, and this is going to be kind of an ongoing project throughout your whole business, but it is really important to get really clear on it, to really understand who your target market is before you get started. And then after you have a business idea, after you've done your market research, you move to step three, which is to build a portfolio and pitching to clients. So a portfolio in the online business space is so important. This is your new resume, okay? Throw out all that paper, the Google Word docs that you have. Okay, you need a portfolio. You need to showcase your work. So, building your portfolio can be as simple as creating a Google folder labeled portfolio where you are putting in all of your work. So, for example, if you are wanting to start a photo editing business, you want to help photographers take off some of their load, reduce their time by editing their pictures for them. What you need to start doing is creating mock projects, start editing pictures, and then start pitching to some of your photographer friends for either really discounted services or free services so that you can edit their pictures, add it to your portfolio, get reps, build your confidence, and then get testimonials from all of your clients. And testimonials will go a really long way in building your credibility. This step is especially important for those who are starting a business and maybe something that's new to them where they don't have prior experience or examples to give. Because if you're starting something brand new that you've never done before or something that you haven't done as a business before, you might not already have examples to show clients or potential clients. And so these mock projects that Monica was talking about or these free or discounted projects are going to give you some social proof and give you this chance to to let paying or higher paying paying clients know that you know what you're doing, you're good at what you do, look at these examples of what you've already done. So this is a great way to start if you don't have anything yet. Yeah, and then after every project you complete, you can raise your prices. So for example, the first website that Austin and I ever built was for my sister. It was completely free. We were going through a website course. We built it kind of as we were going. We learned it and we got a fantastic testimonial. And then we use that website we built and that testimonial plus a couple of other mock projects that we had done to pitch to other clients. And therefore we found clients on Facebook 
Facebook. We found clients through other family members and other friends. And every time we did a website, we were raising our prices because we were getting better and better and our services were worth more. And more confident. Like you said, we were more confident that we were producing something good. The benefit of doing it this way is that you are already getting revenue in your business, which you can invest back into your business. We'll talk about where to invest that in a second. You're getting confidence. We've already mentioned that a couple times, but also you're getting validation in your business. You can start making money tomorrow if you put all these things in place. So this money that you are going to start collecting as you do cheap projects and start increasing the price little by little, you can use to start making your business official. And this is our fourth step. Sometimes this topic gets a little bit scary for new business owners because it's kind of an intimidating topic. And what we're talking about is deciding on your business structure. So if you don't do anything and you just start collecting money and start offering services, you're automatically going to be called a sole proprietor. So this is what's called a pass-through entity, which means that you are taxed the same as your business. The business that you own is basically a personal asset of yours. If you so desire, you can register your business as an LLC, which is basically, it's kind of a legal protection. It creates a wall between your business and your personal life. So it protects your personal assets from anything that could happen like heaven forbid you get sued in your business or vice versa. It protects all your business things if anything personal happens. We're also talking about getting any licenses or permits. This is very dependent on what business you're going to do. Some businesses are more regulated, so you'll have to get a permit or a license. Others, you won't need it. So it's going to take some research to figure out what type of business structure you want, what licenses you'll need, We have a very good friend of ours, Crystal, who works on all this, and she can help you guys figure it out. She runs this business called Nomad Tax. If you want to talk to her, she offers consultations, and you can get on a call with her and explain your situation, and she can help you figure out exactly what you need to get your business set up officially. Yeah, so if thinking about any of this is causing your heart to pound and your palms to sweat, reach out to Crystal. It is not worth the anxiety of trying to figure it out on your own and and panicking that you're going to get it wrong and being constantly worried that you did it wrong. Just reach out to Crystal. She's awesome. As Austin mentioned, she offers consultations. We'll link to that in the bio below. We also worked with Crystal extensively in our course to build out a, a whole module, a whole video about how to make it official, and about how to manage your finances, which coincidentally is step number five. Woo! Finances. So you need to keep your finances, your money very, very straight, very orderly. The importance of this is probably the big glaring one is IRS audits, but also just for your own peace of mind, knowing that you're doing things well, knowing that you have enough money to invest when you want and need to. Our biggest tip for this is to open up a business bank account so that you can keep your personal money and your business money separate. This is extremely important. It's gonna help keep everything organized and clean. Make sure there's no question about if you're misspending money or anything like that. You can open up a business bank account probably at the bank you're already using. Monica and I use Wells Fargo. It's an incredible bank to work with. Sometimes if you're lucky, when you're opening a business bank account, you can get a fun promo. So for example, when we opened our account, I think it was you had to keep $5,000 in your account for two months and then they just gave you $1,500. It was awesome. There's not a lot of instances where you literally get free money. This was one of them. Another thing you can do is open up a business credit card. This might take a little bit of time of having been in business for a little bit to build some credit, build some credibility in your business. But eventually you'll be able to apply for a business credit card, which then you can use to make purchases and then build up. You can get points just like a personal credit card. You can get points, which you can then spend on different things. All of this is super important for your finances, for your taxes, and for your ability to reinvest in your business, which will help you grow and scale in the future. It's really, really, really important that you are saving money in your business to pay the bills, things like softwares and platforms, your computers if you ever need an update, and then also to reinvest in in coaching and courses. Anything like that can be invested from your business as helping you learn and grow. When starting your business, it is going 
going to require a little bit of funding. The types of businesses that Austin and I are talking about, we have that whole list of different of 63 business types. All of those businesses are going to require a really low amount of capital, but it will still require a little bit of kickstart. This will be for things like buying your computer if you don't already have one or a good camera or a lens or like Monica said, any software. So it'll just help kickstart your business. So I think Austin and I gave ourselves a personal, I think it was like between $500 and $1,000. And that was for the course we invested in and for a couple of different software things. And that's it. And then once we made that money back, we paid back our personal loan from ourselves. And then we started immediately investing in our business and saving about 20% of all income for taxes. Again, if the word taxes is giving you heart palpitations, please reach out to Crystal. I can't stress it enough. She is so cool. She is so good at explaining taxes and she is so good at helping you overcome these different obstacles and getting the most bang for your buck as far as taxes and business setups go. Again, in our course, we have a whole module about business and we interview Crystal and we talk with her for about an hour and we talk all about taxes. We talk about quarterly taxes, what the heck those are, and how and when to pay them and how much, how to figure it out. We talk about everything you will need to know about getting started with taxes. You also want to consider how you're going to do your accounting and your bookkeeping. Make sure from the very beginning, right from the get-go, you are keeping track of your expenses, how much you're spending and where. You can do this on a simple like Google Sheets spreadsheet or an Excel spreadsheet. Monica and I are actually putting together a spreadsheet that we are going to include in the course, a template that you can use in your own business for all of these transactions and making sure that everything's staying neat and organized and that you are keeping track of everything you need to be keeping track of. Alrighty, I believe that takes us to step number six. And this is knowing what softwares to use and putting processes in place. This is what happens after you have come up with a business idea, done your market research, and built your portfolio. Okay, this is after you've already started making money, after you've already started to, f- started to figure out what processes are working, what's not quite working, what different softwares you might need, and then using the money you've made to reinvest into these. So this is really important because it's going to, again, help keep you very organized and structured. Without softwares, Monica and I would be, I mean, first of all, would be extremely lost. We'd have different sticky notes and papers everywhere and different folders and binders. We would not be able to keep track of our finances. We wouldn't be able to keep track of our clients, of our services. We would be a hot mess, you guys. But with softwares, you can elevate the offerings that you're providing and you can keep yourself organized. So a couple different examples of softwares you can use. There's different communication softwares. So this could be with your clients or this could be with other team members if you have people that you're working with. A couple examples could be things like Slack or Zoom or Voxer. Those are a couple just to get you understanding what what I'm talking about and give you some examples that you could use. You'll also want to look into any like work management or project management type softwares. This is going to help keep your client processes in place. Make sure that you're not forgetting anything you need to do. A lot of things can slip through the cracks without these. Monica and I love and use Microsoft to do. We've also used things like Asana, ClickUp, Trello. Using your Google Calendar to keep track of your schedule and appointments that you might have is really, really important. Client management softwares, this is making sure that invoices are paid, that you're keeping track of which clients you're working with, where they are in your process. The ones that come to mind are HoneyBook and Dubsado. And then different financial softwares. This is, again, for invoicing, getting paid, credit card transactions, bank transfers. This would be things like Dubsado. We've used Wave Accounting. You can use QuickBooks. So those are just a few examples of softwares that you might be needing, things to consider. It's very personalized based on the business that you're running, what you're going to need. And a lot of these that I've mentioned have free trials or free versions. So look into them. We'll include some links in the description below to the to some of our favorites that we've enjoyed using. I just encourage you to take some time to figure out how you want to structure your business and how the flow is going to be with clients and then figure out which one of these you might be needing. Perfect. 
And that is going to take us to step seven, the last step, which is to market your business. And now I know this is shocking to a lot of people that marketing is actually the last thing on our list. But at this point, you should already be making money. You've now got your softwares, your systems, your processes in place. You know how to run a a successful business. You are ready to grow and scale your business. Trying to market your business before this point is going to be really hard because you don't have the back end set up that makes it easy for you to take on more clients and to move this into a full-time job. And what we mean is is being a little bit more intentional and targeted with your marketing, because to be quite honest, up to this point, you've already done some marketing. Uh, as you've built your portfolio and as you've worked with friends and family on free projects or discounted projects, I mean, that's a form of marketing because you're networking with people. You're getting your name out there. When you do market research, that's a form of marketing because you're reaching out to people and finding out what they need, what they want and you're growing and evolving your business based on that. So you've already done some marketing up to this point, but now we're talking about more intentional, more direct marketing. And our personal method of doing this is what's called organic marketing. There's kind of two schools. There's organic marketing and there's paid. Paid is where you're going to run ads. You're going to promote posts. You're going to pay to get your name out there. Monica and I are big proponents of organic marketing, which is doing it through relationships, doing it through your content, through what you're putting out. Not not to say that there isn't a time and a place for paid advertising, but you do need to set up your organic marketing first because by doing that and getting a sales funnel that'll work is the only way that you can ensure that your money is going to work for you with your paid advertising. And most of the time you're going to find that maybe you don't even need to worry about paid advertising at all. Yeah, exactly. I would argue that paid marketing is, if, again, there's nothing wrong with it, but probably something later down the road once you're a little bit more established and once you know more about your ideal client and you can target them a little bit easier. One big question that Monica and I get from people who are starting a business is, do I need a website? Do I need a logo or branding right off the bat? We would say needing a website is a definite must. You should have a website out there because your website serves a lot of purposes. It can be where you showcase your work. It can be where you get people to know, like, and trust you, learn about what you offer. There's a lot of benefits to having a central place where you can send people. And I know you can do a lot of things like that on different social media platforms, but having a website means that you own that content. You own what's on there. It's yours. You can control it. You're a little bit more in charge of what happens when it's on your website. Think of your website as the storefront for your business. Since you are running an online business, you don't actually have a brick and mortar location for people to come into. You want your website to be just that. You want people to to land on your website and to be completely enveloped in your brand and your work. You want people to know who you are and what you do to help them. Now, again, this isn't something you need to worry about right off the bat. You need to start building your portfolio first And then you can move your portfolio to your website so it's a much more professional display of your portfolio and more people can find you organically. Now, as far as logo and branding goes, this is the fun part for a lot of people, but a lot of people do get really caught up on needing a logo before they start. And that's just not true. You don't need a logo. You don't need a brand to get started making money. As you are growing and scaling, it will be important to create a brand, to create consistency so that people can recognize you right off the bat. They know what to expect when they're working with you. And this is so much more than just a logo. This includes your colors, your fonts. This includes your tone of voice that you use when speaking to your clients. And this will really help you create an experience for your clients, which will get them talking about what it was like to work with you, which in turn will get you more clients. I'm going to back Monica up on this one. I think having a logo or creating a logo for your business, it's a really fun process and it's a it's a creative process. And a lot of people really want to do that initially because it's, it's fun and people enjoy doing that, but it's not necessary from the beginning. So don't get too hung up on this. Definitely, you can start looking into what type of logo you might want or what you want your branding to look like, but it's not necessary to get your business up and running. Other parts of marketing that we want you to start considering and thinking about is how are you going to attract your clients? 
This could be through social media. This could be through blogs. This could be through a podcast. You could do YouTube videos. You want to think about what would your ideal clients be interested in? How are you going to bring them in and start sharing your value with them so that later they can become paying clients? Yeah, that word you said right there is key in marketing. Always make sure you're providing value to your potential clients. Show them that you are the expert and that you can really help them solve their problem. Then look at networking. Networking is such a great way to grow your business. The word networking can feel a little bit sticky because it feels like you have to be pitching your services. It kind of feels like kind of pyramid schemey. But it doesn't have to be that. In fact, it can be a really beautiful relationship building thing in your business. I would argue that networking is probably one of the biggest drivers to growing your business. It's probably the most important aspect to marketing because business honestly is all about relationships. It's about what type of relationship you have with other business owners, the type of relationship you have with clients. You want to make sure that you're being respectful in all of your interactions with people. Make sure you're providing value in exchange for asking people to pay you for your services. Networking is a great way to find clients. It's also a good way to brainstorm solutions to problems because maybe if you're in a networking group with other complementary business owners, you might have a problem in your business that you don't know how to solve. And as you network with other business owners, you can find out this other person, Jenna, let's say, had the same problem a year ago, and here's what she did to fix it. And she can help give you ideas on how to solve this problem. It's also a really good way to combat business loneliness because that's a real thing. When you start an online business, especially an online one, it can be really easy to feel lonely, feel a little bit isolated because it's a solo venture you're going on. Even if you're doing it with a partner, it sometimes feels like a solo venture in the sense that you you don't have coworkers anymore. Maybe your friends and family aren't running businesses themselves. And so you feel sometimes isolated, but as you network with other business owners, other people, you you fight that. You kind of push that away and you learn other people are in a similar situation as you. You can build friendships with them and it just bolsters this feeling of camaraderie, of friendship, and of being part of a community. Another great way to market your business is by building out a referral system from past clients. So turn your past clients into business ambassadors, into brand ambassadors for your services and have them go out and find more clients for you. It's such a great way to build your business with personal connections. Everybody really likes to be that person that has the answers for their other business friends. Chances are, if that client you worked with was your ideal client, They have other ideal client friends for you and they can go out and find them and refer you. I know people who have built their entire businesses off of referrals alone. Yeah. Referral systems are a very powerful, very powerful way to grow and scale your business. So let's recap. Starting from the beginning, we talked about one, starting with a good business idea. This is where it all begins. Two, you want to conduct market research and find out what's going on in the world revolving around this idea that you have. Three, you want to start building a portfolio, gathering some examples of projects you've worked on and start pitching those to clients. Do some mock projects if needed. Four, make it official. So you want to figure out your business structure if you'll need any licenses and permits. Five, get your finances in order by putting together a business bank account, how you're going to fund your business, keep track of your bookkeeping. Six, softwares and processes. Know what softwares you're going to need. Get some processes in place so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Seven, your marketing. How are you going to attract clients? How are you going to build like, know, and trust with them? And what are you going to do to get your name out there? Okay, I know at this point you are thinking, this was fantastic information, but I need more. So how can I hear more? How can I learn more? And the answer to that is in the link below. Join our waitlist for our course where we go over all of these things and so, so much more. Thanks for listening and sticking around to the end of this episode. We really appreciate you being here. If you're interested in starting and growing your online business so that you can live as a digital nomad, then grab our free list of online business ideas to help you get started. You'll find it in the link below. See you next time.